Good evening. I'm Antoine Mack. And I'm Travis Wacker. Here's what's coming up next on Panther Vision. As last week, and we're not talking about the temperatures. Well, I'm putting my last $20 in this tank. Hopefully it'll do something. But we can help you ease the pain at the pump. Stay tuned for tips on how to get more miles per gallon out of your car. If you're feeling crafty, find out how to get your fix for free. I uh, walked in and saw what it was and saw that they had wheels. And I was really excited and I started throwing that day. And the sound of music comes to UWM. Could the next Julie Andrews be right on our campus? All that and more next in Panther Vision. From the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, this is UWM Panther Vision. A weekly newscast reported, written, and produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication. And now, the news. Good evening. If you think the pain at the pump is bad, the worst may be yet to come. Experts are now predicting the record gas prices will continue to rise. The former president of Shell Oil predicts a gallon of gas will top the $5 mark by the end of the year. High gas prices hit student hard, especially at a commuting campus like UWM. We have team coverage tonight, including how you can ease the pain by getting a few extra miles per gallon out of your car. We begin with reporter Caitlin Sharkey, who tells us how students are coping with $80 fill-ups. Trevor Berg is thinking about trading in his truck. Skateboard, Prius. This UWM student isn't happy about the amount of money it's costing him to fill up his tank. Well, now it's about $80. With commuting to work and school each day, the price is adding up quickly. I don't have unlimited funds. Paying at the pump might be a bit of an understatement for Milwaukee drivers. In the metro area, prices are reaching a record high $4.20. So for even smaller cars like mine, it's a hefty price to pay. Because of the increase in prices, Berg and others are making use of the Milwaukee Transit system. Well, I take the bus, so I mean, let the city worry about that. Jim Haiflinger is the head mechanic at the mobile station on Capitol Drive and has recently seen a drop in fuel sales. People just aren't driving around, you know, a lot more motorcycles, scooters, Vespas, those types of, you know, they don't use nearly the same amount of fuel. With prices this high, Berg isn't planning on an eventful summer. Definitely not going to be going on any road trips. If fuel prices remain this expensive, drivers can throw away hope for a summer behind the wheel. In Milwaukee, I'm Caitlin Sharkey for Panther Vision. Gas prices have hit record highs, something all motorists are well aware of. Well, I'm putting my last $20 in this tank. Hopefully it'll do something. Hold me off till payday. With prices in Milwaukee averaging around $4.19 a gallon, it isn't easy being a commuter for students like Jamaica Thompson. But there are a few steps you can take to ease the pain at the pump. Things that affect fuel economy include engine efficiency, drag, and changes of momentum. And there are things that we can do in each of these areas to improve the fuel economy of our own cars. John Reimer, owner of Caledonia Automotive, revealed some secrets on getting more miles per gallon out of your typical passenger car. Uh, improve your fuel economy. We can spend maybe 15 or 20 dollars here and, and get a lot more airflow and, and more fuel economy. And how often would you For Improving spare, gas mileage also goes beyond the engine. Keeping all of your tires properly inflated is crucial pretty easy to do. 32 pounds and you're good to go. Gas mileage also depends on the shape of your car. Some cars are sleeker than others in the wind and, and some are boxy and that affects fuel economy drastically. There's not a lot we can do with the aerodynamics of our car. We can slow down. Now that Jamaica knows how to make that $20 go the distance, she's ready to roll. So tune up, air up, Slow down and drive smoothly. You'll save gas and money, and you'll also pollute less. In racing, I'm Shakara Robinson for Panther Vision. 
unleaded gas in Milwaukee currently averages 402 a gallon. UW, UWM officially has a new chancellor. The Board of Regents has approved Dr. Michael Lovell as UWM's eighth chancellor. Lovell joined UWM in 2008 as Dean of the College of Engineering and Applied Science. Lovell's appointment takes effect immediately, although his inauguration date has not yet been set. An email from Governor Walker is being met with an angry response from the UWM University Committee. Last week, Walker sent an email to all state employees announcing a new state employee recognition program. The email starts by saying, quote, thank you for your service to Wisconsin. Our state is proud of the hard work and dedication you bring to your job every day. UWM's University Committee unanimously endorsed a reply to Walker. Their email says, quote, we regard his, state, his proposed state employee recognition program to be disingenuous, insulting, and condescending to the members of the faculty and staff of our institution. Many state employees are upset with Governor Walker's budget bills, which strip state unions of most bargaining rights. Nearly 1,000 NPS employees will lose their jobs in 2012 because of budget cuts. That's because next year's proposed NPS budget is 13% less than this year's. Superintendent Gregory Thornton says next year's budget is one of the most cha challenging NPS has ever seen. Thornton cites state and federal funding cuts and says teachers, coaches, nurses, and secretaries will be affected most. Some UWM graduate assistants are asking Chancellor Lovell to take a stronger stance against Governor Walker's budget cuts. Members and allies of the Milwaukee Graduate Assistance Association marched to Chapman Hall to deliver a large postcard to the Chancellor. The postcard asked him to take immediate action addressing increases in student tuition and fees, as well as take a stronger stance against the budget. A state senator is calling for the resignation of a UWM Oshkosh professor for asking his students to sign a recall petition in class. During a recording taken by a student in the class, Professor Stephen Richards is heard telling students to sign a recall petition, petition against Republican Senator Andy Hopper of Fond du Lac. But we, uh, our effort is to recall this Republican Senator and by signing this sheet all it's saying is that you, um, you like, you're signing it to have him recalled. University officials have released a statement saying they respect academic freedom, but Richard's comments cross the line into inappropriate political activity. They say they've addressed the problem and it has been corrected. For many foreigners, becoming a U.S. citizen is an accomplishment, but some find it difficult to immigrate to a new country. Michael Bayou has the story. For millions worldwide, coming to America would be a dream come true. Not so for UWM student Aryam Cassette. My mom, I remember my mom asking me, how would I feel about coming to, going to the United States? And I laughed and I said, ew, never, I, I'm not going. Really? Yeah. Hailing from East Africa, Cassette's birth is a story in itself. I was actually born in the battlefield of uh, Eritrea. She recalls a traumatic event while living in her homeland. Seeing dead bodies, I, I think those are some things I remember seeing. Her family is one of the few who won the diversity visa. It's basically a, an authorization from the United States saying it's okay for you to come to the United States versus people who are illegal immigrants. Whether it's understanding cultural differences or learning English, Immigrating can be a hard adjustment. So, back home, it was more of everyone was the same color, and if it was someone that was white, you know, you always, you know, appreciated that or you appreciated this. While majoring in marketing and holding down two jobs, this senior is making a difference. Despite Aryam's busy schedule, she's also a dedicated tutor who helps students accomplish their ambitions. Cassetti gives credit to her mother for motivating her. She works for Johnny King as a commercial cleaning company. Where she was able to f fulfill her mom duty in Minnesota and her sister daughter duty back home to where her family is living well and she has two mortgages in Minnesota. To her credit, Cassetti is taking advantage of every possible opportunity. In Milwaukee, I'm Michael Bayou for Panther Vision. The Diversity Immigrant Visa Program makes 50,000 permanent visas available to persons from low immigration countries. A new memorial can easily be seen right on UWM's campus. John O'Leary has the report. Victims of the September 11th terrorist attack are being honored right on UWM's campus. 
The college Republicans put out a memorial for them in Spates Plaza after hearing news of Osama bin Laden's death. Kate Edwards, chairman of the college Republicans, organized the memorial. Because of the news last night that um, Osama bin Laden has died, we just um, we felt it appropriate to set up some flags and remember 9/11 and um, thank our military, thank the people who are serving us, and uh, just you know pay tribute. Former Army serviceman Dan Pesh says bin Laden's death is a small victory. I rejoice not over the fact that he is dead, but that the world has been rid of a terrible evil. In Milwaukee, I'm John O'Leary for Panther Vision. See why some high school students are tuning up and singing out in UWM buildings. Plus, from art to dance, music to film, we'll tell you what put prospective art students in seventh heaven. All that and more coming up on Panther Vision. City of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Visit uwm.edu for information. I think every teacher has to feel very deeply within his or her heart that these children are potential heroes, citizens of the future. That's what I love about public television. It seems to build on the innocence and idealism of children. We can imagine the future, we can construct it, we can create it. I feel that by remembering public television in an estate plan, we are contributing to the very values that we've nurtured right here now. We're really leaving this rich legacy to the children of the future. It's so true that one person, just one, can make such a difference. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. You'd expect to hear the sounds of music in the Peck School of the Arts buildings. But you might not expect to hear music in just about every campus building. Unless it's state tournament weekend. Alyssa Brass has the story. If music is the international language of mankind, imagine how many languages Allie Bloom can speak. She sings in the shower in the car, in her room, as soon as we leave the house. <laughs> Just 17 years old, and Allie already knows music is her life. Takes a front seat in everything I do. No wonder she's made it to the music's version of a state tournament, the Wisconsin School Music Association State Music Festival. And not just in one event, she's performing in five. I will be singing Preludios by Manuel de Falla. With 10 sites across Wisconsin and over 12,000 entries, Allie is one out of thousands of students. Statewide, there's, there's 220,000 students involved in WSMA programs. The students are clearly talented, but it's about more than just music. The independence that's developed, the ability to work with others is developed, the ability to strive for excellence even when it's very difficult is developed. That's the important aspects out of it. The next Mozart might be walking the halls at this festival, but even he wasn't always perfect. One time in middle school I actually um, missed our final show, one of the numbers, because me and my friend were reading, uh, I think it was a Seventeen magazine. Just your ordinary teenage girl with extraordinary talent. 
for Allie, music is her native tongue. In Milwaukee, I'm Alyssa Brass for Panther Vision. Instead of competing against one another, each young musician is given an overall rating of one through five, with the one being the best. Allie Bloom received a one on both of her piano and alto solos, as well as in her vocal jazz ensemble. Allie's other two events both received a two. The Wisconsin School Music Association has been holding its annual state music festival since 1932. Marquette University is changing the way its police officers report suspected crimes. Officials say campus officers must now contact the Milwaukee Police Department as soon as possible if they feel a crime was committed. This comes as a result of two separate incidents where campus police didn't notify Milwaukee police of a suspected crime. Incoming UWM art students are getting a chance to see where their, work, where their future work may end up. Panther Vision's Lindsay Spa explains. Students take on a new identity, especially when they go into art. It's a pretty color. Incoming freshman Chelsea Latham may have already found hers. Um, I plan on coming to come here for photography. It's an open house displaying what the UWM Peck School of the Arts offers. The best thing for, I think, incoming students or students that are thinking about studying one of the areas of the art, whether that be art, music, theater design, film, uh, or dance, any of those areas there, they have a chance to see what faculty do, they have a chance to see what our students are doing. Studios has a very high security system with hand recognition, but today all six floors are open for family, students, and community members. The event is geared towards attracting students to the school. Among the things on display were printmaking, acting, and Chelsea's former passion, black and white photography. Now she focuses on things a little more desolate. At the moment, my concentration in photography is um, abandoned buildings and places that people wouldn't normally just stop to look at. The so new Kenilworth facility gives the Peck School of the Arts the space to showcase even more student work. People from three years old, actually infants in strollers, along with uh, people that are, you know, retired that are coming here to see what we do. In Milwaukee, I'm Lindsay Spa for Panther Vision. <laughs> Chris Nelson from the Atmospheric Sciences Program joins us with weather. How are we doing, guys? Hey, good. Chris. How about you? How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. We had some interesting weather the past, what, a couple mm -hmm. weeks here. We've had yeah. snow. We've had severe <laughs> weather. We've had a, a huge tornado outbreak down in uh, the Mississippi Dixie Valley area. Let's mm -hmm. see if spring is going to be coming our way here. And it looks like from last week we have video of this little pool area at campus here. And it actually looks pretty nice to be able to go and jump in there, guys. And we have a girl here sitting outside enjoying that weather as well on her laptop. Looks like she's doing a little bit of homework and enjoying the weather as all we are hopefully here. Average temps today, but that'll be changing as we head on into the week here. Spring warm up will be on the way starting after today here. But with that warm up being spring, it always brings us a chance here of storm. So that's why we're seeing here stormy week ahead. So right now here in Milwaukee, we have a lot of sunshine right here and temperatures right now are 51 degrees with that southeast wind making it feel a little bit chillier across the lake here at 15 miles per hour and that pressure is rising here. So our forecast for today, we're going to see that sunshine this, this morning. But that's going to give way to clouds. We'll see mostly cloudy uh, conditions as we get on to the afternoon, maybe a possibility of a storm, but we're going to say about 30% chance here. High should be around 60 degrees, a little bit warmer as we head on inland. Lows from last night, this actually almost looks like about three weeks ago, our high temperatures here. 44 in Rhinelander, that's our cold spot here. But 50s across here in Eau Claire and La Crosse, they're seeing the warm front well before us here in 48 in Milwaukee here. A little bit chillier along the lake here. High temperatures for today, I mentioned the warm front. That's going to be starting right here, kind of going right down here. That's going to be pushing eastward. And we'll be seeing 71 in La Crosse, 68 in Madison. A little bit cooler again here in Milwaukee, 58 degrees and still warm and maybe even a little bit muggy here, 66 in Rhinelander. So our forecast for tonight, we'll be seeing those clouds and maybe a chance of some precipitation. That'll be early on. After midnight, we'll just see mostly cloudy skies here. 47 will be our temperature. And then for tomorrow, We'll be seeing, again, that those warmer temperatures, possibility of maybe a raindrop or two here in the morning, but clouds by the afternoon. Southeast wind blowing from 5 to 10 miles per hour, keeping things a little bit chillier along the lake. 65 in Milwaukee, 70s as we get on inland. And then for Wednesday, 
much of the same here. Warm and humid storms likely. Some of those storms could be in the strong to severe side. Small hail and damaging wind is the primary threat. No tornadoes like we saw a couple weeks ago. 75 is our high. We could see 80s as we head on inland. And then our five-day forecast here, Panther Vision five-day forecast. We mentioned Wednesday about the severe weather. Thursday, finally, a cold front moves across the area, but still we'll see 74 on Thursday. Friday, much cooler with that cold front moving across the area. 58 on Friday. 60s Saturday and Sunday, guys. We'll have to watch for thunderstorms again on Saturday. But looks better than what we've been seeing, right? Oh, yeah, wow. definitely. Maybe we can uh, put away that thermal. Like we were I was just going to ask you about that, Chris, because I, I, I'm just wondering. The weather is kind of tricky lately. Exactly. Mm -hmm. With the competitive job market, students at MATC are finding ways to get ahead. Joe Frost has the story. 15th anniversary of MATC Student Graduate Portfolio Night, which is located at Pier 1 Discovery World on Wednesday, May 11th from 5 to 8 p.m. The program targets graduating students um, from a range of about 24 programs offered at MATC. As students hurry to put their remaining work together, we ask Sharice about the event's outlook. It's always very positive. It's always very well received by uh, students, faculty, and industry. It's a very professional event. It's not an open house. That's not the type of venue that, that it is. It's a venue where students are displaying their work, their talent, um, their portfolios, and their resumes. A student in the television department was looking forward to the employment opportunities. I believe any of us could fill the slots that they're looking for. So really for job opportunities, I'm wide open to any possibilities. Charisse wanted to give students one last piece of advice before Wednesday's event. Put your best foot forward. Make sure you have your resume ready. Um, sell yourself. That's, that's the whole intent of this evening is for our students to have an evening that is, that is all about them, for them to sell themselves and say, this is what I've learned at MATC. This is the talent that I have to offer your company, and this is why you should hire me. Portfolio night is this Wednesday at Discovery World. The men's basketball team finalizes its roster for next season. And find out how to use your creative skills on a budget. All that and more coming up next on Panther Vision. City of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Visit uwm.edu for information. It happens every day. It doesn't stop when you reach a certain age. We're all of us learning, even now. You see something in a person's face and see all they struggle to learn. It could be we are here solely to remind each other what must not be missed or ignored, but celebrated. When do we stop learning? Maybe never. In Chinese medicine, that the body has to move. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. Welcome back. The baseball team continues to move up in the standings. Michael Bayou joins us now with sports. All right, thanks guys. Athletes face the tough task of balancing schoolwork and athletics. UWM recognized those who succeeded in that effort in an awards banquet last week. 
Athletic staff and coaches awarded students for their achievements on the field, in the classroom, and for, and for community service. And as an individual standpoint, you know, it's, it's an honor for me because, because of all the hard work I put into, you know, just this season and seasons before this and, you know, just the pressure and, you know, everything having to be a, a student and an athlete at the same time. I mean, to get this award is big. Congratulations to our women's to select individuals for, the, for their academic performance. The UWM men's basketball team adds the final piece to next year's squad, signing UWM forward Demetrius Harris of Park Hills, Missouri, and shooting guard Paris, Paris Gully of West Burlington Iowa, Iowa, Her from Iowa. Harris averaged 11 points and 7 rebounds last season in Division I Junior College League play. Gully averaged 13 points last season and was, a, and was voted third-team All-American. The UWM Penn Panther baseball team is taken to the road on a high note. The team won their last three games at home, included, including an 11-3 win over Wisconsin Lutheran. Doug, Doug DeConing led the team going 2-4. for four. He had two home runs and five RBIs. The Panthers did have a bad day in the field, though. They had four errors totaled between four different players. The Panthers' home record is now 8-6. and six. The team is currently in the middle of an eight-game road trip which started with winning two out of three games against Youngstown State this weekend. Their overall record is 22-23. and 23. Five Wisconsin Badgers will be now playing on Sundays instead of Saturdays. That's because they have been drafted to, the, uh, to play in the NFL. Defensive end J.J. Watt was drafted by the Houston Texas, Texans. The other first-round pick was offensive lineman Gabe Karimi, who will be playing down the road for the Chicago Bears. Lance Kendricks will be playing for the Rams and John Moffitt to the Seahawks and Bill Nagy to the Cowboys. Until the NFL lockout is lifted, none of the players will be able to have contact with their new teams, though. Aaron Havner and Chad Pierce are the UWM ROTC Athletes of the Month for April. Havner is a six-time Horizon League champion in both, in both the indoor and outdoor pole vault. She received the award for becoming the first woman in UWM history to exceed 13 feet. Pitcher Chad Pierce went 3-0 last month and was named the Horizon League Newcomer of the Year in 2010. That's it for sports. Back to you, Antoine. UWM's Arts and Crafts Center is getting fired up. Meredith Locke has a story. The Arts and Crafts Center in the Union is open not just to art majors. I'm a science or biology major. But everyone here at UWM. The center offers a vast amount of tools, time, and space for those looking to be a little creative, no matter the experience. I uh, walked in and saw what it was and saw that they had wheels. And I was really excited and I started throwing that day. Provided to students for free the use of um, the tools, the use of the uh, pottery wheel, the use of the kiln, the use of the glazes, all, those are all free. But the fibers area, which is, involves screen printing and sewing machines and now the looms and ceramics. But if you think this center is just for ceramics and sewing, think again. With her sophomore year coming to an end, Melissa Burns has found a new passion. These into floral beads kind of had the notion that, you know, you needed to get some really expensive class in order to get, you know, like the basic knowledge and uh, you don't, like it was really, really affordable. She's taking part in the newest opportunity at the Craft Center, working with glass. I want to eventually start teaching like stained glass, glass fusing, glass painting, that kind of thing. Since February, Warden has been working hard to make working with glass a thing of the future for students. Melissa says that with the opportunity to blow glass, she'll be able to pursue her dream after college. I can also um, work in some kind of design profession, like maybe for a jeweler. In Milwaukee, I'm Meredith Locke for Panther Vision. And there we have it. Thank you for tuning in for tonight's edition of Panther Vision. You can watch us anytime on Time Warner's Wisconsin On Demand, channel, four, channel 411. You can also see us on Time Warner Channel 14 and AT&T Uverse Channel 99 at 5 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays. Have a good week.